Hi, BC, and welcome to my Steely Dan record collection video. Say, first of all, I'd like to talk about something. I've been meaning to talk about this for probably uh, the last few days anyway. Um, Richard Riley remem reminded me today, he's going, Ron, when are you going to get your stereo set up? So here's what's been going on. For the last, been almost two weeks now, we've been working on the stereo room. I got a new hi-fi equipment rack ordered out of California. It's supposed to be here on Wednesday. So Wednesday, uh, I should be able to set up my stereo. And uh, hopefully within the that day, next day, I can do a room tour video. And then all them folks that's uh, clamoring and anxious and all that, they'll have a good video to watch, hopefully. If, and uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was when I showed my David Bowie records, you know, most of those are Jap Japanese original pressings. And I had a subscriber ask me, Ron, what sounds better, the UK original press or the the Japan original pressing. Well, it's been my experience. I have a Manfred Mann's Earth Band Solar Fire and I had a uh, Roxy Music uh, record. I bought them both new. I bought them both. They were UK presses. Original pressings when they first came out. And they always had phenomenal sound on them records. I always used to play them a lot because they sounded so good. And, uh, but I was able to, at some time down the road, I got a original Japan press of Solar Fire. Wow. So much better than that UK press. And again, on the Roxy Music record, I got a UK, I got a Japan original. And I thought I would never need anything better than that UK press because it sounded so good. But when I did get the original Japan press, I realized, yeah, it's better. It's a lot better. So without further ado, Steely Dan. Can't buy a thrill. Now this record came out. This was their first LP, 72. Uh, and this is on the original Pink Probe label out of Japan. I'm not sure how many of you people know about the Pink Probe label. But that's the original label for Steely Dan uh, out of UK, and so that's what the Japanese use. And this is an original Japan press, and just look how nice it is. It's really, really good condition, this record. And it sounds fantastic. It sounds better than that ABC record, that you know original press that I had from Canada, or that maybe it was a black MCA rainbow, I think was when it first came out in Canada. It sounded... But this sounds better than that. Great sounding record. And then, here we go. Steely Dan Can't Buy a Thrill. So why have I got this one? This is kind of an illustration about why I have this channel. Is because this is a reissue. And this is when they were making reissues and this is still one of those record companies that does speakers corner they're still going to find out where's that original master tape they're still going to use you know analog delay they're still going to make analog lacquers and they're still going to press all analog records and they sound fantastic so which one sounds better the japanese one who who original that blows away all of the UK, all of the American, the Canadian, all those other presses? Or or this? No. This is this is so much better. It's embarrassing. Why how can this one be so much better? How can it be better than this? Then that's why we love these records. Because this makes a great sounding record sound bad. That's awesome. That it can do that. That's how good that Speaker's Corner stuff is. Next we get Countdown to Ecstasy. 73. 
Now, I didn't have this record originally. When this record came out, you know, Ricky Don't Lose That Number, that was the song on the radio of the time. And a friend of mine at work asked me if I heard this one. And I said, no, I hadn't heard it. So he lent me the record for a couple of weeks and I listened to it and right away after I listened to it, this is still one of my favorite Steely Dan records to today. It's a great, great record. I love it. And again, it's a Japanese original on the Rock Now OB. It's kind of funny, all those, a lot of those early Japan records have these pink OBs. And it's on the pink probe. And it's very, very beautiful, wonderful sounding record. And look at the condition it's in. Unbelievable. It's just so nice. Let me get Pretzel Logic. Again, it's on a gatefold. You get a book. Steely Dan. Got their logo on it. And it's just, you know, lyrics, credits. But it does have a picture of them in here. Now that picture, I remember it from something else. It must have been on the back of a record or something of some time. And now this one, again, Pink Probe, original Japan Press. Record sounds phenomenal. Now I think this one, I just had a Canadian press of it. And this old Japan original master just made a joke of that Canadian press. It was so much better. Now here's an interesting record. This is probably the last Steely Dan record that I purchased on the, on the Japanese label like this, uh, pressing. This is not one of my favorite Steely Dan records, but it's still good. And you know, it was, it did come out, it did come out on the, MoFi did a reissue of this on a Half Speed Master. So it was either, can I find a really good Japanese pressing or can I get a good deal on that MoFi? And, you know, the thing with the MoFi, if they were in great condition, they wanted $100. And if they were beat up, they still wanted 50 So I had a hard time finding a really nice one for, like, say, 50 Couldn't do it hardly. Well, as I was looking through from, I think it was a Billy Cobham record that I was wanting to get. It was on an original press. And I said, you know what? What else does that seller have out of there in Japan that I could get? And he had this. He had this on a white label promo. Now you see these, let these letters right here? These Japanese writing? That means promo in, in Japanese. So if you ever see those letters like that, Daniel and I used to call that the birthday cake. I don't know how we came up with that, but that's what we called it. It's got birthday cake on it. That's a promo. We see those letters because on the more modern records now, they don't do white label promos anymore. And a lot of them, they won't even have the sample on the top. They won't even have sample written on there. You have to look at the label. And you know, a lot of the modern records now, they all have those picture labels. And it won't have the sample, it'll have a picture label. And on that picture label, you'll have those letters on there. You'll have that birthday cake on there. And that is a promo. That's how you tell nowadays. But again, here's one of my favorite Steely Dan records. And uh, it's again on a the Royal Scam. Japanese insert in it. And now they're on to the ABC Records label. Nippon, Columbia, made in Japan. Great sounding record. Of course, I've only, I only had the, uh, the, I think it was a Canadian press that I had. I bought it brand new when it came out. Love the record. I played it a thousand times. Great, great record. Love it. If you don't know about this record, you need to get it and listen to it. Buy it and do whatever it is the deal is. Fantastic record. Then Asia. 
Now, Asia, this is probably Steely Dan's best-sounding record. This was mastered by Bernie Grunman over there in, uh, at uh, A&M in California. You know, A&M made great records. Bernie Grunman makes great records T together. This is their, what they, this is their best-sounding record. And it is reported to be, you know, one of those audiophile quality sounding records. And it's a very shiny cover. It's got the original. This is the original press out of Japan now. 1978, I believe. Or 7 or whatever it is. And uh, same label as the other one. But this is a great sounding record right here. Too bad it's not my favorite Steely Dan record, but it is good. Then Gaucho is the next one. And just to for to illustrate how good these Japanese records are, this is on the black MCA label. I used to have the on this was on a had a silver sticker on it. It was an MCA Half Speed Audio File Series, Master File Series, whatever they called it. And uh, that's the one I had. I had a, I probably had that for 25 years in my record collection. And uh, I was buying a bunch of records out of Japan, and they had a couple of these. And that was for a really good price, so I bought both of them. And when I got them, you know, one of the things I, I had to to do was a lot of times is hey I've got to just I've got to find out is this better than what I've got because sometimes I forget but on this occasion I didn't and I listened to it I compared it to that MCA half speed master and now this record absolutely destroyed it in every category and this is you know MCA's this is their their flagship pressing this is their audiophile series. This is their half speed master. This never mind the run of the mill record that came out, you know, on the MC label when they first pressed it. This we're comparing this to something that they're they were they're proud of. This is their their best product they can put out. And this thing is, is destroying it. This is why I love these these Japanese pressings so much. Original pressings. Because you got to get the original Japanese pressing because if you don't, if you get the reissue, then they start sounding bright on the top and bass shy. They still sound good, but they're not. There's no you. You can't compare them to the original presses. Donald Fagan, The Nightfly. This is a reissue. I used to have this on a Japanese first edition promo. Had the little sample up here, and I never knew why, but. I didn't like the sound of it and I'm going how can it, why does this Japanese promo why does it have that top end that I don't like There's something about this record I don't know what they did to it see I didn't know this was a digital record for a long time I just knew when I bought that Japanese record I didn't like the sound of it and then I found out later it was a digital it was digitally mastered and I said okay well that makes sense then why I don't like it and I bought this one now this was 05 or something, 06, when I bought this. And uh, they must have got the tape and they've got some better analog, digital to analog converters. And they, they cleaned up that sound. They took that harshness out of it when they remastered this for this pressing. It sounds a lot better. Warner Brother reissued this. Sounds great. I like it. Now... Who did this? I didn't know this until the other day because I haven't been looking at records. But I'm looking at getting another press of this record. I won't say anything about it right now. Donald Fagan, Sunken Condos. This is another great record. Pressed on a 180 gram vinyl. Pressed on clear vinyl, high performance vinyl because soundmatters.com. This is a 2LP, sounds phenomenal. Great sounding record. And it's got a lot of good music on it. And this was actually, I think, put out before that one, Morph the Cat. And the hype sticker on this one 
says, the new album from the co-leaders of Steely Dan featuring H Gang. HPV 180 gram vinyl, plated and pressed at RTI, mastered for vinyl by Kevin Gray and Steve Hoffman at Acoustatech. You know, that's, and it's still got the same thing because Silent Matter is on here. So, you all know how this record sounds because I just told you who made it, who mastered it, who pressed it. Steve Hoffman, Kevin Gray, RTI. This is, this is where what Rhino Head did, I've done, and I've just figured this out lately. With all those Warner Brother tapes, they got all the tapes from Warner Brother. They sent all the tapes over there to RTI. And they had Kevin Gray and Steve Hoffman remaster all those tapes, and they played it and pressed them at RTI. And RTI went and got all those thick covers made up, just like MoFi would have done. And they put out... I don't know, 15, 20 records or whatever they put out, and they were all phenomenal, phenomenal reissues. And then, of course, they couldn't do it anymore because the record company started saying, hey, we need to start making digital records. So if, they, if, if we could have just kept the reissue labels like Speaker's Corner, Classic Records, uh, DCC, Direct Compact Classics, Analog Productions, Classic Records, if those folks could still get tapes and make records, man, we'd have a lot better records than we're getting from these, all these digital records now. And this is uh, Cheap Christmas by Donald Fagan, the complete, what it is, it's a compilation of all of his, you know, the ones we showed, the Morph to Cat, the Sunken Condos, the Nightfly, and then uh, Kamakidrid, and then he's got a little 10 extra song record on here. Now this is this was a late 90s record, and yeah, no, middle of the 90s I think somewhere in the mid 90s this record came out. Try to find those 90s records. You know they're all like gold. They're really really hard to get a hold of. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention was, yeah, Daniel bought me this for uh, Christmas. And since I haven't had my stereo set up or anything, I haven't been able to listen to it. But it's soon to get on the turntable. Now we've got some Porcupine Tree in Absentia. These are all double records, 180 gram vinyl. They sound fantastic. All the songs on these records are fantastic. Song after song after song. Two LPs. Great, great, great records. Porcupine Tree. And here's Fear of a... A blank plant porcupine tree, same exact thing, two LPs, 180 gram, fairly quiet pressings. They're not perfectly quiet. I'm pretty sure they're uh, Netherlands, 2007. UK presses or they're all made European presses. Really, really good sounding records. And then the last one, Signify, that I have. This has got my favorite song on it. Um, I can't remember what the name of it is. It's got me uh, Dark Matter. If you're not sure about Porcu Porcupine Tree, look it up. Porcupine Tree, Dark Matter. Have a listen to that. And thanks for watching. Bye bye for now.